Hello YouTube, thank you for joining me on my channel. Today I will be making a recurve hunting knife forged from a piece of bus leaf spring. This is a chunky piece of metal, so my first step would be to weld on a handle to make the handling easier and flatten and draw the metal out to a workable width and thickness. I fire up the forge and get the metal evenly heated up before I start hammering on it. Once the metal does not stick to a magnet anymore, I know it is hot enough to be forged. Hammering on cold metal is not really ideal as it might cause cracks in the metal. Using the round end of my hammer, I will start by drawing out a piece of metal, moving systematically up and down the bar. I will also give both sides of the metal equal amount of hammering time. This episode is sponsored by KnifeInfusist.com Are you tired of buying or selling knives on online platforms but constantly run into red tape associated with these platforms? Then you should check out KnifeInfusist.com KnifeInfusist.com is an online knife buying and selling platform made by knife enthusiasts for knife enthusiasts. And what makes this platform so unique is that it is a community-driven platform where the community takes a role in its development, instead of large corporate companies. You can discuss, buy or sell knives from your collection to make a profit, or just hang out and socialize with other knife lovers. Knifeenthusiast.com is a relatively new site, so this is your opportunity to shape our community as you'd like. Are there specific content you're looking for? Features that would make buying, selling and trading knives easier? This site is designed to be user-friendly and are constantly looking to approve, all based on your feedback. Your knife, your voice, our community. I will keep on drawing out the metal until I reach the desired thickness. I will keep it a little bit thicker as what my end result should be as I know a lot of metal will be grinded away later when I flatten the profile. The metal is now at the thickness I need it to be, roughly about 8mm. So I'll focus on flattening and straightening out the metal by using the flat end of my hammer. Right now I'll be using light taps instead of hard blows of the hammer to avoid hammering in any deep marks that will be difficult to remove later. I also wipe the anvil clean from any scale as often as possible to avoid it being embedded into the metal. I now hammer in a curve on the spine area. This might look counterintuitive, but once I start hammering in the bevels, the metal will be moved upwards to form a neat drop point shape.
To make the hammering of my curve easier, I position the tip of my blade over the edge of my anvil and hammer in a little hook that catches on the edge of the anvil. This stops the blade from moving around as I hammer it. Once I reach the shape I want, I can simply hammer the hook down into the profile, also moving up and down the spine and cutting edge of the blade to straighten everything. Next I need to determine how long my blade should be and mark it by hammering in a notch and then start shaping the tip of the blade into a more drop point shape. I need to start working on the bevels as well, so I mark my plunge line areas by hammering in a notch at a 45 degree angle using the edge of my anvil. From this notch I need to draw out the metal to form the bevel area. This will also assist with shaping the drop point shape of the knife. Using the corner of my hammer I focus on the area where the plunge line begins and hammer that area flat. Now I'll hammer towards the tip of the blade drawing out the metal as I go. I don't want to hammer cold metal so as soon as the metal loses color I'll put it back into the forge. In between hammering sessions where I focus on shaping the profile, I will spend a little bit of time to flatten and straightening the metal out.
I have my general blade shape hammered out, so next I'll hammer in a choil which separates the blade area from my handle area. I can then proceed to hammer in the recurve on the blade. My anvil does not have a horn to hammer out rounded sections, so I made myself a jig that fits into the hardy hole of the anvil. This helps me hammer in finger choils on the handle area. My profile is starting to take shape now, so I'm focusing on straightening out and drawing out the bevels a little bit more. I have my general profile forged out and can now trim it down using my angle grinder, then proceed to clean it up on my belt grinder.
I need to put the profile through a normalization process to relieve it from any stresses that might have built up during the forging process. To do this, I heat the blade up to critical temperature and letting it air cool to room temperature. This will help prevent any cracking or warping during the heat treatment process. To remove the unwanted forge scale, I let the blade soak in vinegar overnight. This loosens the scale allowing me to brush it off without much effort. Forge scale is very hard and removing it beforehand makes the cleaning up process of the blade much easier. With most of the scale gone, I can clean up the profile on my belt grinder. I'm focusing more on the handle area now, trying to get it as flat and as clean as possible. I then mark, punch and drill all the pinholes. I'm drilling 3mm holes for the pins and an 8mm hole for the lanyard tube. Additionally, I will add 10mm holes to help with the epoxy distribution and better bond strength during the glue-up process. I use a permanent marker to color the blade and then scribe the bevel area and cutting edge center line. I want to grind a full bevel on this blade, so I only need to indicate where the plunge lines need to end. Using a 10mm round file, I file in the plunge lines up until the marked area. Using a file guide ensures that I file both plunge lines symmetrical. Once the plunge lines are set, I can proceed to grinding the bevels. I use the belt grinder to do most of the stock removal before moving over to my file jet with a hand file to finish off the bevels. I prefer to finish with the hand files as I have much more control over it and get consistent results every time.
I use 150 grit sandpaper to remove all the heavy scratches before heat treatment. I also ensure that the area where the bolsters will sit is perfectly flat. I do all of this before heat treatment because the metal is still in a soft state and easier to hand sand than when it is hardened. It is time for the heat treatment. I use some scraps of metal to preheat my oil and then proceed to heat up my blade. I will do another normalization process and then proceed to hardening the blade. The edge area will heat up faster than the spine area, so I check the blade regularly to ensure it heats up evenly. I don't want to overheat the edge, so I remove it from the forge every few seconds and let the heat travel through the metal until the blade is heated evenly. Once I reach critical temperature and it does not stick to a magnet anymore, I quench it. I give it a quick sand down and temper it twice in a small kitchen oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 2 hours per cycle. I'm looking for a golden straw color on the metal once the tempering is completed. That means that my temper temperatures fell within the correct range. I will clean it up with 150 grit sandpaper again. The final hand sanding process will happen after the pins and bolsters have been prepared for fitment. I don't want to spend the time hand sanding the blade only to risk scratching it when measuring and test fitting bolsters. I am using 3mm 304 stainless steel for the pinning material and 8mm stainless steel tube for the lanyard. I cut the pins and tube to size and bevel the ends slightly. The bolsters will be from 304 stainless steel, the same as the pins. This helps the pins to blend in perfectly with the bolsters once it's peened. I cut the pieces to size, clean up the one side and drill the pin holes. A drop of super glue helps to secure the bolster to the blade in order to drill the pin holes accurately.
I then mark the final shape of the front of the bolsters and grind it down to shape. I prefer to mark the bolsters left from right to make identification easier during the fitment process. Use the one bolster as a template to grind the other bolster symmetrical. I bevel the front of each bolster at a 45 degree angle and countersink the pinholes on the inside of the bolsters. The front part of the bolster are all finished up to 800 grit before I buff it on my polishing wheel. Back to my blade, I grind in a slight false edge and a sharpening choil. The area between the sharpening choil and the finger choil is grinded into an S-curve and I slightly knock off the edges on a 45 degree angle.
It is time for the final hand sanding process. I will start with 150 grit sandpaper, sanding in a 45 degree angle before moving over to a 180 degree angle down the blade. I then move to a higher grit and follow the same procedure until all the previous grit marks are removed. I continue like this until I reach the final 800 grit. I'm getting ready to fit the bolsters and grind it down to its rough final shape. It's important to make sure all the surfaces, both the bolster and the blade, are perfectly flat to ensure a good fit. I polish the front of the bolsters on my buffing wheel before I do the fitment. Simply because after fitment it will be difficult to polish everything without scuffing the blade. I drill a few dimples on the inside of the bolsters to ensure that not all the epoxy gets squeezed out as the pressure is applied to the bolsters when peening the pins. I add a little bit of epoxy to the bolsters to create a waterproof barrier between the blade and the bolster to prevent rust from forming underneath the bolster.
I pin the pins immediately before the epoxy cures. This way, the pins can squeeze out any excess epoxy as it expands, which would otherwise prevent the pins from blending in perfectly with the bolsters. An earbud dipped in acetone is used to clean off any epoxy that seeps out from the bolsters. Once the epoxy is cured, I can grind the bolsters clean. I can now fit the rest of the handle. A drop of superglue secures the wood to the blade in order to drill the pinholes accurately. I will be using Bocote wood for my knife. My scales are a little bit too thick, so I'll grind it down to match the thickness of the bolsters. I also collect some of the wood dust to use later on there should there be any cracks to fill. Then I clean everything with acetone, glue it together and clamp it up until the epoxy cures.
A little bit of wood dust mixed with epoxy forms a paste which I smear over the joint between the bolsters and the wood, just to fill up any gaps should there be any. The epoxy is cured and I can grind the pins to size and peen it. I use two ball bearings in my vise to flare out the lanyard tube slightly. Be careful though not to apply too much pressure and risk cracking the hood. I grind off the excess pin material and start profiling the handle. To shape the handle, I start on a 45 degree angle to set the maximum point up to where I must grind. I then slowly remove handle material by using a half round motion to grind the handle into its half round shape. Patience here is key, so don't rush. I finish on a 400 grit belt and then move over to sanding paper where I will take it up to a 1200 grit finish.
A final buff brings out the beautiful polish on the handle and the bolsters.
I sharpened a knife on a 20 degree angle and strop it on my lever strop to polish the cutting edge. That concludes the build for today. Thank you for watching and I trust that you learned something new from this video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And until the next time, keep well and goodbye.